Hi. <laughs> Hi. How you doing? I'm good. And yourself? Uh, yeah, I realized that it would have been me hosting on Arta's account. <laughs> but I originally was logged into mine. So when I tried to log in, it was waiting for a host that wasn't there <laughs> because I was not there. So I had to switch accounts and then it was getting confused about me letting Which account? <laughs> Yeah, it just got lost, so I had to like drop it all back and start again like twice. And eventually, I, I joined. Anyway, well, it's worked. Whatever you've done has worked. Yeah, we're, we're here now, so that's all. I'm yeah. About. How are you doing? I don't. I'm good. Yeah. I'm tired. <laughs> I mean, it's pretty early for you, isn't it? It's like really... it's not so early. It's about seven, so it's not terrible. But um, I consider that pretty early. <laughs> I can, well, I all of you work till like three in the morning, so. Yeah, part of it is, is yeah, I'm, I'm often up to like two, so yeah, a.m. is no fun. I do occasionally wake up as early as that. But <laughs> even when I when I work, I work in a school, so <laughs> like. Oh really? Up, yeah. Is that your normal job? Um, I don't really. Yeah, for lack of a better word, it's my it's my yeah. full time work right now. I've yeah. not worked in I've not worked in schools for very long though. <clears throat> yeah. What do I you do? I work in special needs in a one-on-one. Wow. Where's the sound just gone? Probably just talking too okay. quietly. It happens sometimes. <laughs> Bear with me a second. Let me just turn my little gate down and turn my mic volume up. I'm also wondering if the others uh, have set it. Well, I don't know where they are. Let me see if Bianca's online. She's not even online. Why is this? Curious. Yeah, but I can't see Bianca online right now. I don't know no. if um, I think I think Daniel's coming. I don't know. I and don't know. I think she'd asked. I never know the name of the other woman who does the daily calls with you because her name's always Fring on her on this. Uh, Frangies or no? There's the other one. The um. All oh, right, yeah, um, Shannon. Yes, <laughs> Shannon Hitch on Cahill. Yeah, yeah, I thought Shannon's that maybe cool. Bank had suggested her also. Um, well, everyone is in the call, like, any everyone who wants to see it is in the thread. Yeah, Shannon's not Shannon's not online right now. Yeah, I got confused because in in Bianca's well, I guess we need to to see what she thinks, but um in her doodle survey. It looked like it was in an hour's time. And then it was G the difference between GMT and UK time. And oh my God, it's all too hard. Yeah, hard. I mean, we, well, we you asked about the times and then I confirmed the times and since yeah, then she's so the others, seen it, so. Yeah. Otherwise, we just could have a really, really long call where you and me just have a chat. <laughs> I was going to ask her, is there anything I can do rather than... I mean, to be fair, time. I've, no, it's not really wasting time. I think getting to know each other is an important part of the um, Good one. getting things done. I mean, I'm very... I've done it before where I've dropped into like team calls and no one's got like, well, one person, like the person's hosting the call and no one else. So I've sat and chatted with them for half an hour or so, an hour just to get to know them and see what they've been up to. And and yeah, I think it's important to get to know each other as humans as well, not just yeah, the work doing that we're stuff. doing. Because I think it's important, you know, the only way this works as a community is if we actually people act like a community and that involves not just slave driving and making people work. It's got yeah. to be a, and today we're all going through no matter which way you look at it right now, apart from like New Zealand, which is pretty much fine. It had like a, uh, a not blip. Really. <laughs> it had a blip. Like the, the government actually managed it really well on like most of the world. I know we're kind of lucky because we're an island. So that's one thing. But also they actually. Do you realize really I live in Britain? Yeah, which is an island. <laughs> oh, it's an, your island is a lot closer to other things than our islands. 
uh, islands are very. It's also far got a lot more people in it, to be fair. That's true. It's and like ten maybe times not the as best many people. Leader. Yeah. May yeah. Maybe not the best leader. That's about yeah. as polite as you could get. Let's let's yeah. leave that because otherwise it'll get sweary. Yeah. It'll get very sweary. My best friend lives in Milton in Milton Keynes in uh, Thane Boyce. Um, I don't even know where that is. Uh, it's on the very eastern end of the. Um, oh God, where is it? Essex. It's on the very end All of right. the tube line, and um, yeah, we catch up regularly so she can say like, uh, "What the hell is going on? Like, why are people not taking this seriously?" It's really hard because I want to just be like, "We're we're just about back to normal." <laughs> yeah, we're not going to be back to normal for a while. Um, I don't care. I, I have literally been telling people since the middle of February, March, when we started, when it started to get bad, when we started to notice it. And especially because I, I, my school closed like right beginning of March. I'm like 12 weeks at home now, which is wow. wild. I, this that is, is my a 12th, long time. This is my 12th week where I have gone out of the house two, two times a week, maybe three and I go to the park or I go to the shops and that's it. Um, yeah. and, it's, and I've been wow. telling people since the beginning of March, when people started, when lockdown was officially announced, and I'm like, get comfortable with this. We made a mess. It's going to be like this till September. And we're probably going to have to deal. Yeah. September. Six, six months. I reckon it's going to be wow. six months before we see anything sensible, calm. And we're going to have this of some form for two years. Yeah, I think that too. I think even for us, I think our borders will be shut for It'll, a couple of years, but I'm really hopeful they're not because I need to get to the UK next year. But <laughs> Yeah, well, you might not want to come. There's been some really interesting stuff. There's um, a Cambridge researcher that's put an interesting, like a, a Cambridge researcher, virologist, so an actual expert, you know, a professor of virology. If there's ever someone you should listen to when it comes to you know, viruses. I feel like that's probably one of them. And he's been talking about the fact that um, um, one of the, the best models they come up with right now is an 80 day cycle of 50 days lockdown and 30 days reduced lockdown for two years. Far out. Is that, is that, he's, he's talking about the UK. He's not talking about like, yeah, he's ta well, he's talking about wow. basically globally. Like everyone wow. will have to have phases of closed or, much more like tight nylon like full lockdown and then social distancing but still not exactly nightclubs and partying yeah we're about to open up to nightclubs and partying uh, maybe next week but um we we're all nervous about that but everyone's behaviors already changed we're already like yeah it's so just like naturally the, distancing there's so much industry that's going to go to the wall. Have I have I ignored you, Bianca? I didn't realize. I mean, I thought it, I thought I just noticed it quickly, but I might have completely missed you for five minutes. We've just been chatting. No, no, no. I'm sorry. I I somehow all this GMT business uh, still <laughs> managed to confuse me. I thought we were talking an hour later. We were discussing the fact that maybe you thought it was an hour later, so we were just chatting. <laughs> we were like, yeah, hey, talking about the general craziness of it all and coronavirus and you know lockdown. Right, so do you think other people thought so too? Because we were supposed to be more, right? Like in the, um, in the doodle, more people responded. Yeah, Artur had said yes and... Oops, not that. Um, well, the thing is though, in an hour from now, there's a... Well, in, in not even an hour from now, it's in 15 minutes. There's a Gitmo meeting. Right, okay. So I kind of think that it all might smush together if that's the case. And Arta and Daniel are there for that. So right. maybe we'll just end up doing like, I don't know. It depends on, it, I don't know. I don't know what the plan is. I, I very rarely know what's going on. I'm just normally working out on the fly. <laughs> yeah. Not going to lie. There's, there's, Which, it's, I mean, it's, it's all that, good it's anyway because thing. I didn't hear back from Rohan Um and uh, but yesterday I got a notification that you sent me a message and I kind of just saw like the start of it where he said he wasn't available, but then I didn't see more. And I went on Slack and the message wasn't there. So I don't mm. exactly know if everything's good. And hey, Pringles. Hi, Pringles. 
Hey, friend, guys. Hi. Um, yeah, and so kind of having Rohan in the conversation is reasonably important. It's reasonably we'll important. He is, our main, he is our main web person right now. It's not, the weird thing is though, it's not, we don't, it's not that we need only Rohan. It's like, the only reason Arta doesn't do it is because he's busy. It's not that he's not capable of doing it. It's just, you know, busy <laughs> doing a million things. Oh, I don't know. I don't know how he does it. I don't know how he does it at all. It breaks, breaks my brain, the amount of things he concentrates on. It breaks my brain, the amount of things I concentrate on, and I feel like I'm doing nothing compared to what he's doing sometimes. Oh. Not at all. Not at all true. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, so I don't... Um, don't really know, but uh, if, if he can be available... Um, to help with this because I haven't I haven't heard back from him. Um, yeah, I'm trying to get for. somebody else to join who can um, help out with the web thing. I have I had, I've had a look for people with PHP skills and no one's listed PHP skills. I'm assuming people have it because it's not an uncommon language to know but no one's like specified it. So, um, so it's just like, I'm not really sure. Yeah. Oh yeah. We did kind of allow for half eight, half nine. Maybe I got mixed up. I don't know. <laughs> oh, good. I mean, at the, at the very least, what we can maybe share uh, in this conversation and then others can see the recording or we can, we can uh, talk about that individually is um, the things we talked about last time, Tyler. Um, uh -huh. Got confused, it says Arthur. Um, <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, so what we discussed last time is about the, the kind of three tier approach to the sign up and generally kind of what, what we're wanting to do on the web thing. And then we'll work out what that requires technically, um, and, and cool. how we can how we can get it done, we'll get it into yeah. the CRM. I've got to remind my brain of what I was talking about. I come up with really good ideas sometimes, and I have no idea where they go. Yeah, but I wrote them down. <laughs> Somebody else keeps track of it. That's one of the reasons why, to a certain extent, the best conversations I can have are the ones that are recorded, because then I can go back and make sure that I understood what I said. Because in the moment, I can be like, it sounds like a cuss. This is my spur of the moment right off the top of my head moment. And I'm like, what did I say again an hour ago? I can't remember. <laughs> um, luckily, I took a note when you were talking about this. <laughs> and, and, I, and I really like the approach. Um, I guess there's two um, kind of two main things um, about the registration process. And uh, one of them is that we obviously want the details to go straight into the CRM so we can uh -huh. make best use of all the uh, automation um, that can be done there. And so we don't have to do it manually. Uh, so and that's one no. big thing. And it requires somebody to look in to, into how that can be done. Um, if we need to continue using Zapier, for example, I don't think that should be necessary. We should be able to have some kind of API and send the data, or maybe we do some tricking with like automatic CSV imports. I don't know, but essentially somebody needs to have a look at it and figure out what, we, what can be done. I'm, I assuming, still, I'm this, assuming the CRM's got some sort of API import yeah. systems into it. I mean, I feel like it's a very, big hole in the design of it if it doesn't have some sort of automated pipeline for data. I can't imagine that because that'd be just, what the hell's the point of a CRM if you can't import data into it automatically? Yeah. It's just, I haven't looked at it at all. I've just um, done manual CSV inputs with it so far. Um, and there the status is that it only works for the plain text fields. And everything that is like a selector drop down thing um, will have to be done manually. So I think there's still a fair amount of manual curation, curation that we need to do. But having done this for a number of users now, I think there's also a lot of value 
in doing that because then you can actually read what they wrote in the message you can see what organization they're with and you can kind of get a lot more information yeah, about I mean, them than just what they put I mean, in their what... skills that's what I've started to do. That's one of the reasons why in that scenario, why I've been opening like LinkedIn pages and actually yeah. they, they've they got, you know, they're proficient in this language, this language and this language that was never mentioned, but is useful things to know, but it's just going to be a really, it's going to be a big slog. I'm not going to lie. We have, I mean, I've looked at it. I should put it earlier on. Um, the numbers now put us somewhere with everyone in the master list merge together I, I there's a couple of i've realized there's a few i missed on the merge and i've done them anyway but i reckon in we're at about 1300 people thereabouts between the slack membership and the signups and there's nearly 200 people who have signed up and never joined slack so that's mm. a a gap that either we we ever reach out to them and ask them if they're interested or if they i mean they're the primary example of people who should be on like a they're mildly interested, but they're not actively interested. So they would be more likely to be newsletters and that kind of things and being updated about what we're doing, but not actually wanting to join. That's kind that's, of. Yeah. And that's what we were about. talking about last time as well. And I think actually one, I, one solution for this, I want to approach for this could be uh, to, to actually use the CRM and go like import everybody's basic details and then use the newsletter or like the email functionality there and send a message out to people and say, cool, you're, you're sign up. We've just changed our system. Do you want to be actively contributing or do you just want to stay informed and just have them click a button essentially. And then we know who we need to curate manually. And it also, and yeah, it's, a, it for everybody. it's, and we That's can let people idea. unsubscribe at that point if they're not interested anymore for whatever reason. Yeah. And so that's because... be a, a reasonably easier thing to do. Hmm. And I was just going to say that in Slack, there are really only about 200 people active at any time. And so I feel like it's a, yeah, yeah. a load of work if we curate everyone. And, and really there's, like in general, people sign up and then like, well, it's too hard. So we should focus on the people that are actually going to do stuff or find the people that are, I think. Yeah, and, and that's that by reaching out to everyone might reinvigorate them in the sense that like we're still working i mean at that mm. point we could have something of like if we can come up with a really good this is what's been this is what's happened this is what yeah. we've done this is what yeah. we've got so far now we are into the point where we've tidied things up we've got a new system would yeah. you like to still be informed would yeah. you like to now be more actively involved or would you like to unsubscribe yeah. and totally. absolutely yeah. any of them options are perfectly fine we're not going to cry yeah. about it but yeah. it might make people go oh actually I'm actually, I am a bit more of a designer and now they've started to got things I can be involved or and now they've started to be more organized. I can feel like I can mm. contribute, contribute rather than like turning up and going, I don't know what to do. Yeah. yeah. The other thing that I read um, in the notes, um, Bianca, uh, that was made me really think, I uh, thought it was a very good, uh, you know, dimension was the idea that um, people are coming to this with skills, but what do they actually want to do? And I'm just thinking about this idea of manually, um, you know, looking at what they've written and then, you know, Tyler mentioning doing the deeper dive into the LinkedIn. But if, if in fact there's, you know, I like, you know, for your day job, you might be all those things, but then we, we do find that somebody's yeah. like, yeah, for this, I'm volunteering and I'm, I have knowledge of this and that's what I want to do. So I'm just thinking. Yeah, it's, we, we, we was one thing that. we've discussed. Yeah, it was one thing we've discussed. I think maybe as a, um, we might need to work out a few more people who are community people who are going to be helping sort of like what I've been doing because that way, if people then go, I'm more interested in joining up, then we could start testing on boarding processes that are actually more rounded. And we could have like, actually, okay, if you're interested, 
we can make some doodle polls of when's convenient for you to have a sit down, you know, an actual video discussion, group them into fives. So it's a manageable amount. Also, they get to introduce a few, you know, a few different people at the same time. So they can mm -hmm. start talking to each other. They're all, can, you can almost like make mini classrooms yeah. of like, you're in together. You might not do the same things, but there, you know, you're, you're at least peers in the same stage. We're all volunteers, but you can be at least grouped up in the, if we can work out how to do that in a smart way. But then onboard them into it, into like, you know, I have a conversation with five people who go, okay, I've seen, you know, I've got, we've got your list of what your skills, you're actually coming back, you're showing that you're interested, but not only what are you capable of, but what are you interested in doing and what do you understand about what's being done? Because I've had like one-on-one -on -one conversations like that, but if we could group them, it'd be a little bit easier because that means I could just explain yeah. what we've done and fully give people the real big picture of what's going on at five at a time or 10 at a time rather than one at a time because it's, yeah. it's yeah it's just one thing i'm thinking but um well I, I think that's a good idea that that's a good idea because then then they all everyone moves kind of with a cohort like i remember when i started there were some people that like you know you just start with certain people and even if you end up going in different directions it it helps. They all wave. Yeah, they all wave. You, you joined around at the same time. You were all, you know, I was fairly early in the whole, early in the whole thing. And I didn't really have a wave. I was just digging around trying to work out what's going on. Um, but yeah, there's going to be, the longer this goes on, the more it's going to feel like waves, especially when we push a meet, you know, there's, there's a media push or there's, um, something that gives a burst of attention, then grouping them sort of people together makes kind of some sense. And like I say, it just builds a little bit of a community rather than just like turning up by themselves. I think we can easily, well, easily do that. I think we can have like two, you know, two hemisphere um, welcome calls, maybe you mm -hmm. doing one or so, yeah. And, and then everyone just joins that call if they want to, or sees the recording maybe. Mm -hmm. that's true yeah maybe welcome calls yeah we could just have rather than like general calls but more of a like here's a new people call for people who who would who would join you Verified. know because some people join up into the new you know the general call but they're also like this is like a formal thing and we need to get through this information and there's no room yeah. for me to like have a chat yeah. and it's like well, having a chat's fine but yeah, when you've only got 30 minutes and eight things to get through, yeah, that you don't want to disturb people. Yeah, and that call's really about what needs to get done. Yeah. Okay, so, so I mean, I'll write that down. I'm definitely pro having more social calls and more, like, connecting calls. It's obviously time, but it's better for the community. It's better for everyone's mental health, and for, yeah. especially for, like, people who aren't working and are at home by themselves or they're not seeing very many people. I mean... Some people are still in lockdown. Some people are still working from home. Some people are not working at all. So it's one of the reasons why I keep in doing the, um, you know, how's people feeling check-ins because it's just sometimes if you don't have anyone who's asking that question, you've got no one to answer it to. And yeah, I think trying to build a bit more a community feel to it's important. At least it is for me. Yeah, I <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> My dog is fucking crazy. Um, I think that, yeah, at the, with the welcome call towards the end or at some point we can, you know, give those few action steps, you know, yeah. so that people feel grounded. They, you know, they can, you know, we can keep, get, keep everybody on track. More, yeah. you know, of course we might do it through other means, but the welcome call can be another way for people that, are auditory and visual and just need to be on track mm -hmm. on a Zoom call instead of reading a whole bunch of stuff. Yeah, I mean, I've seen some interesting examples of, um, I had a, I, had a, I don't, you guys have, do you guys have access to the, um, I'll share a link that I had a, I had a conversation with Anak, the guy who shared that Rome research summary of the onboarding process he went through recently. He shared it in general. But um, I, had, um, I did like an hour long call with him talking about his onboarding process. I, did, I called it user research because it was literally half of it was me getting his eye, getting an idea of how he felt about the onboarding and what, what, you know, what, what he's learned from it and that sort of stuff. 
Um, but then the other half was talking about what he's interested in and, you know, organizational management systems and knowledge, knowledge management ideas. So for them, it's unlisted right now. It's on. It's, it's saved. I just need to do the notes on it, but it's unlisted. But I, um, because it's unlisted, I can still copy it into the channel, and you guys could see it if you watch the first half of it if you want. Is um, it might be of interest. I don't know. I need to get the notes out of it really. That way you can yeah read through it in five minutes rather than a half an hour. Um, but I'm gonna try and do a bit more of that as well of like new people research, especially once they're through the door. And work out, you know, what can we do better? What's worked? What's can we search working? me if you want? I feel like that's why I wanted to join this <laughs> this channel. Is I feel like I have stuff to offer, but I didn't know. And then Bianca really helped me to figure out where I could help. But yeah, like just getting some like a random Slack invite. I was like, I, I don't know what's going on. <laughs> yeah, well, we we're not going to be having random Slack invites anymore. I've turned them off for a start. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> the only way you can actually be um you know only way you can join slack is through the the official channels through the website so but i'm glad i got it because i got nothing else so so i'm still glad right. i got it <laughs> right <laughs> okay. uh, which is actually a big topic um so it, i've seen in the crm it has a lot of functionality to automatically send out emails and there's email templates and you can put like rules around when somebody should receive it and make it all very huh. Uh, super smooth, but I haven't really looked into how that works. And that's definitely something for uh, somebody interested to take on and and see how we can use that functionality so we don't have to rely on Zapier, which seems to have it, it, its issues regularly and uh, and do it all in there maybe. But then once you've done that, you can also you know set labels onto the users or do something to their profiles that gives us an idea of what they have done where, and what they have received. Where they are. And those in, kind of yeah, things. where they are. Mm. Yeah, that's the, yeah. I mean, it's the difference between like an automated onboarding system. Yeah, they've signed up to the email. Have they opened mm. the email? Yes, they've opened the email. Did they click on the link? No, they didn't click on the link. Okay, well, we can wait a few days and push it back out to them if they're not going to click. And then if we can try it three times and beyond that, we'll just take them, we'll just assume they don't, they're not interested and we'll take them off the list. You can automate that sort of stuff. I've seen it done in other CRM systems. But yeah. um, I've, ne I've never I've built seen, it, but I think we need and, to find someone who's really interested in marketing, like a marketing geek who loves who loves the marketing life and that kind of thing. I've seen wants some... in the taxonomy a whole there bunch of different marketing things. So in theory, oh, we have there. there in the community. So we can we can put a call out to see if somebody wants to wants to look into that. The more I look into the functionality of the CRM. Um, the more I like it and the more I'm impressed because it is very powerful, but it's tricky to figure out, to figure out how gonna, things work. It's going, it's going to need building. That's the thing. It's not, it's not going to build itself. It's not going to be out of the box and go like you click three buttons and it works. It's like, no, this, we need to design the system to work as well as we need it to, because there is places where we're using it in a way that's not strictly how it's designed, but mm. you know, we're working with what we've got. Yeah. I don't think anything exists to deal with an organization like us. I just don't think we're very much, which is not very much of a normal thing. It's one thing that I'm starting to realize more and more. It's like an open science meets community management experiment meets a remote <laughs> organization that, yeah, it's just so many different layers to it. Um, the other thing that I wanted to, to bring up is, is this idea that we, we talked about last time, Tyler, to actually have different ways of joining the community. Um, and so we just touched on that for the existing people in there, but this is also very much um, of interest, I think, for new people, because right now there's only one way. It's like, well, and you have to write a message and you have to put your skills and it's kind of implied that you're going to be contributing. Um, and we don't really have an option for people to say, oh, I just want to like stay informed um, about what's happening, or or I want to just be able to use your the dataverse. Yeah, well, I saw that's what the three tiers we were talking about, wasn't it? It was the yeah. I'm just interested to be an observer, so I'll get the updates, and I'm not interested beyond that. It's the I intend to use your data dataverse or infrastructure as a mm. user or or a researcher, but I'm not interested in helping develop any of the tools or any of the processes behind that. And you would be like, 
signed up with us and then sent directly to the Dataverse sign up and they would be kept in one box and then active developer contributors like us for it would be its own pot and it also keeps slack from people who were just like mm -hmm. filling it up i mean don't mm -hmm. get me wrong no, no one's going to ever be bothered you could you could you could join it and not be an active contributor that's not going to be a problem we just need to understand that and not expect someone to go you know it could be an option in the sense that when you sign up it's like would you like to be added to slack even if you're not going to be an active contributor because some of the conversations up there, or are you just going to be, do you, do you just want a weekly update and that's it? So yeah, that's kind of the three different Yeah. So in, in terms of designing a new sign up flow, I think that should definitely be in there. And, and the, the other advantage of having like a two tier approach where it's like basic details and then detailed skills and taxonomy and this stuff, is that if we separate the two, we can um, hopefully also do it in a way that we can send the new, fill in your, all your skills in relation to what you want to contribute. And we can send that out to existing people that haven't provided skills because they joined directly on Slack or they didn't really yeah. know when they were signing up initially. And that will really help us getting all the, the curated information in the, in the CRM. So in terms of building it into the website, that's how I imagine it, that it's kind of two yeah. separate things. So we can send a link out um, to existing members to just add their skills as well. Yeah, and I think um, when it comes to when we design that sign up process, I think if we can get, because right now we've got obviously a very simplistic, you know, what's your skills, what's your message? And if we could break down the, what skills are you bringing? What things do you want to learn? or improve upon mm. and why are you interested in joining that would get all three of the things it doesn't you know you could the why doesn't have to be big you could even say just like a little idea of why if you want to expand on that we have a whole channel for it you know um but because that way understanding why people want to join gives us yeah. an idea of their motivation their intrinsic motivation levels their their interest levels if it's just like i want to join like because i have already noticed from reading people it's like i want to join because i want to help covid and I'm like that's a very nondescript way of helping i mean I, i'm absolutely 100 percent love your enthusiasm but also like help in what way <laughs> what do you, well yeah. do you yeah it's like you need to understand I understand you don't understand what we're doing, but when now we've got a better idea that we're about building tools to help researchers, we are not the researchers. Unless you happen to be a researcher, but great. But then you're not coming to us to learn how to be a researcher. You already are one. <laughs> you're coming to us for tools. Yeah. But and I think that's like, part of what we need now is that clarity of yeah, we're building tools to help that researchers. That gran yeah, that granularity of understanding. I mean, there's... Um, we do need to just get, we're starting to build up some documents on what we're doing and what's been made and who's making what where. But someone needs to just dig in and I don't want to do it, but someone needs to basically, <laughs> somebody needs to sit down and write down a lot of things in a really clear way about what we are doing, what what we've done so far, what's the what's the direction we're traveling on, what, you know, the the what we are doing and then it, and then frame that in the why because obviously the why makes people understand the bigger goals the bigger ideas and the and the and the bigger understanding because what is a is a now concept why is a future you know that's where i look at it anyways i'm talking a lot someone else talk um i think in terms of the, because we're recording this and people have asked about about it i think we should also mention again the awesome work that uh, you folks have been doing with the user uh, the user flow in, in marrow because i think this would be a really good place to uh, just collect information about how this whole process works at the moment and then also see where we want to go with that um with the new system um and yeah just keep adding adding information there for me yeah, this, lots. this works well for me um Miro is allowed for i don't know how many users i can't remember on a free account because this is a free account i'm on Miro right now 
but the three account i can only have three boards and this is one of them but my idea is the board isn't limited so if we could just have one big white space for all of these kind of things that theorizing the design work the conceptualizing the organizational systems i'm perfectly fine with it all being sitting on one space and we can yeah we can build more and more notes we can build different project ideas and if we get more and people involved in explaining their thing that they're involved with or even if they've written it somewhere else and we bring it into this as a as a not not the only but I, one of the single points of understanding for the time being and then well Prachi's here so Prachi can't join the call but she's in the mirror <laughs> <laughs> yeah I, I'm still not entirely sure if we had had a mix up with the time um so that's all good I mean, this earlier time actually works better for me. Miro has a lot of, like I've put in everything that I can find, um, about, but it's not like, it's a little bit clunky because you have to go into those individual boxes to read stuff, but it still is gathering it all in one place. But maybe, um, maybe I can split that out into those three different tiers, the, the, the journeys for the three different tiers. Yeah. Yeah, I think that would be great. I mean, yeah. the way, it, yeah, I've, I'll, I don't know. I had, I had a different idea for a journey map, but mostly because, but I shouldn't, but I just brought in a template and didn't fill it. So it's fine. It's, um, I'll just edit it to my way and think, or add it, add the things on because yeah, the journey map for me should talk about like what, what they want to get out of it. In, you know, the, what, what are they wanting to do? Why they want to do it? Then those sort of questions and pain points and sticking points. We should talk about them too. Cause we're not, the sticky points are not really there yet. And we, we already understand some of them. So we should definitely be like, these are what we got the sticking points. And this is the things we need to overcome and design out. Um, well, if you want to change it, go ahead. I think also I'm cautious that if we, like we might overcook things is it feels like a little bit like we're trying to boil the ocean at the moment. We're just like, everything needs to change. And I, I'm not sure that everything does. I feel like the sign up form just needs to integrate straight to the CRM. Yeah. That's the most important thing. We need to yeah. curate the CRM manually for now until we figure out how to automate it uh, yeah. and get the data in, which we're busy with. And yeah. aside from that, get some clarity. I feel like get some clarity on what, what the volunteer group is doing. So um, yeah, I mean, at the current I mean, flows, I, it's still working. It's still getting people. Yeah, I mean, when, once we're in the CRM, we can start. We can start just updating like what 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 team they're in, the people who are in there, because most of them I already have in the um, Slack user groups. It'd be a case of looking at the Slack user groups and just lining them up. Okay, yeah. that person's in that team. That's a you know, it's a case of obviously it doesn't have to be fixed. It's just give us an idea of if they're in a team already, they're already involved and actively partaking. Just yeah. little things like that. Um, but yeah, I'm not saying we're trying to overdo it. I'm just trying to think of... Um, no, for me, this is just a great work. resource. Say if we get a, a, a new web person in to just say, hey, this is, this is the goal and here's the part that we kind of need some work done. And for me, it's a really good way to understand the whole process easily. But no, we don't have to over detail it there. It's just good to have some links to the existing documents that we have or saying at the moment, it's like the Google groups that we use for sending out these emails. Um, but I also completely agree. We should just go ahead and start using the, the CRM and start trying out stuff in there um, and, and build it while we're doing so. Yep, build it, as, build it as we work. That's the way we work around here. Just start doing it and yeah. we'll we'll fix it as we go along. The idea is not come up with the perfect solution. It's to start solving the problem. Yeah. The, the better. It's a mind, it's a balancing act though, because it's the thing that like some people, we've had other people turn like, Oh, try this software or try that system or try that system. It's like one, we can't try them all. And two, we can't try them all <laughs> one after the other. Cause yeah. then we'll, then we'll never get anywhere. <laughs> yes. Yeah. There might be a perfect system out there, but how many things do we have to test before we get to that? It's, I don't know. Is it, is it worth it? So I don't know if I'm misunderstood, but for me, the problem we're trying to solve right now is the, um, is getting one, everything in one place, getting all the people's data in one place, which the CRM yep. will solve. And then the other thing is the matching, 
which I'm, I'm not currently sure if it's like as high a priority because it feels like the manual matching on low numbers of people is doable. Or is it that we expect waves of people to come in and so we need a better way to match quicker? Um, I think it's a mixture of right now there is very few people doing it. And yes, there isn't a lot of people joining, but part of the problem is I'm not completely owning it in the sense that like, I am not dealing with every single person who comes in. And the amount of people who join versus the amount of people who introduce themselves, which is the people who normally get yeah. interacted with. So it's a case of um, having a better idea and a better process to actually fully on board someone rather than expecting them to be the f and we've said it before they need to have a little bit of get up and go about them they need to have a little bit of like i want to be involved you please let me help because if they're turning up and expecting there's someone to spoon feed them little things it's like you're in the wrong place that's that's not what we do <laughs> and no matter what yeah. we can no no one sat around with a big list of things for people you know and looking for people to fill them it's a case of there's lots and lots of little problems and you can find a place where you yeah. can feel like you're being helpful. But we want to get people into that mindset of like, get involved. Don't be up, you know, don't be scared. You're going to hurt someone's feeling. If you do feelings, if you do something or don't be scared to, to reach out to people or don't be scared to offer your help in somewhere where you feel like you can be and start doing it because do, starting doing it shows that you can do it, which means you're much more likely to get asked to do more things anyway. So it's, um, it's a balancing act. So for me, there's three things that as I was working with the CRM that I think um, we, can, we can use it for quite easily. Um, one of them is new people coming in, sending them into the right direction, like to the right team or a, a right person to talk to that kind of suits what they are saying they want to do and what their background is. Um, and this automatically happens when you kind of curate the new profiles coming in. And uh, the next thing is um, we can search for specific skills very easily and easily have a list of Slack IDs that we can give to the person needing that specific help and say, here, those people have said they have the skills. Um, and then the third thing is with the skills taxonomy, we can pull out uh, groups uh, in specific areas and again, go to team leads or you know, people wanting to do something in a specific area and say, hey, there's all these people who are biologists and they might be super useful for you to talk to. Uh, so you can go and reach out to them. And that's all stuff that is there now in, in the way it's set up. Yeah. So this is definitely, yeah. Sorry. No, I'm just wondering, are the team leads, is the vision that the team leads will be able to jump on to the CRM too? at any time they can look for whoever they want. Yep. The okay. idea is we have, um, well, the idea is we'll have a, a full list, not anonymous, but only a very, very limited amount of people who can see that. <clears throat> and there will be um, a list that's anonymized in the sense that there will be no name, there will be no email addresses, um, but there will be an ID and a list of skills and the skills will be searchable. And then basically someone will go and, looking for to the list. Slack. and then from that, they'll be able to click on it and it'll take them to the person not in Slack. Or if, if they don't have a Slack link on them because they've not joined Slack yet, um, the idea is we'd be able to email them from within and send an email going and ideally have some templates of, you know, the, the, the team leads will be able to bring up a template of like, we're looking for X in, in this team you know, join Slack to come and help us out if you're interested sort of thing. And again, they could quickly reach out and they don't have to, they don't have to know whose email is, is going to, and they don't have to know anything like that. It's just a case of, or even a list of people. It's like they find 10 people. Okay, send it, send this email to them, 10 people, because I'm looking for these things. And that's, that's the sort of thing we want. And that's, again, that's already there. So yeah. what um, Shirley and I are working on is just getting all the data imported. Um, but if we just look at the basic details, I mean, that's, that's done very, very quickly. 
and then it's curating the skills for everybody that takes a little bit more time but not even that crazy so we can get that set up very very soon the functionality is already set up and so we can create accounts for team needs they have only limited access they already see the slack ids since tyler painstakingly went through and already got those out for for all the people Pretty and much, so uh, that they'll be imported into the crm so that's that's already all there and I think it's a great way for more people to start using it and then start exploring other functionality of the CRM and, and we can kind of go from there. Yeah, I, I like the idea of, because there's some document storage systems in there and I feel like mm -hmm. that would be a good place to store, um, especially like things that don't change that often or things that have got to the point where this is the final draft or the final draft for now at least a, yeah. a temporary storage place for because i had a quick look at the documents things and it doesn't look it doesn't look super pretty i'm not gonna lie so it's probably a good place to store writing but not necessarily like printable documents or something that you'd want to like display <laughs> it seems like it's a perfectly good storage place for information and um we do need because right now obviously there's hundreds of people with Google Docs and Google Sheets and you know who's got the who's got the master version of this and where is it saved and who's it shared with and it's it's clunky. It's not mm. it's not it's I mean some people have I think some people know to save stuff in in the Corona wide Google Drive, but not everyone does, including me sometimes. So it's just like, you know, trying to yeah centralize some things and leave things distributed when it's not important once it gets a certain threshold then okay this is current info important information you know that can go in there plus things like policy things that are really boring but you know we need to have people who've signed a data policy or you know that sort of stuff that kind of things need to be documented somewhere and it makes sense to store it in one place which is yeah accessible to a limited number of people rather than just a document that's floating around <laughs> Yeah, I just had an idea. Um, maybe I'll just run this past Slava or Anton. Um, because if we want to be trying out the more sophisticated functionality like workflows, automated workflows and things like that, it might make sense to have a test version of the CRM set up somewhere that doesn't have the real data in it. Where you can so we can break out. it accidentally. <laughs> exactly. And I wonder if you can set up uh, like a sandbox version of it somewhere. I mean probably this yeah probably well there's already I would think so as well yeah make a second so if you don't want to accidentally email 1300 people because you're, you're playing around with the work so I mean it would be <laughs> interesting it would, it would be a place where you could test out yeah like the marketing the, yeah. like the marketing processes where we could have like some fake email addresses or even just make spare email addresses just for testing against and this sort of stuff to see what it goes through does the click work or it does work okay that might you know yeah because that's Rather exactly what i did um in the beginning I, was, I just used some test data until i was reasonably confident and even then i discovered like a privacy thing after i imported the real data so it's definitely good to try stuff out um when it comes to the automation Okay, so it seems like our actions from this is to get the data in the CRM, to get the team leads access so that they can start to look at uh, what we have there, um, and to check that they can do things like maybe contact someone in Slack or email them, uh, and then s be able to send the emails from CRM, the welcome and onboard emails. Aside from anything else, at least we need those in because that's the that's the bit where we're falling down at the moment, I think. Yeah. Um, and, and then a sandbox. Yeah. And also put a call out, I think, for some web, web dev. Yeah. Support. And it's, it's, it's actually not just front end, it will probably require some kind of API um, work as well to send the data through. Okay. Well, so if, if need... only we had a list of skills and people who have got them. <laughs> and do we want to look for, we had talked earlier in the call about marketing, uh, nerdy yeah. marketing people. Super nerds in the marketing world. Marketing yeah, I mean, so, nerd, 
content yeah, marketing writers. Nerds, content writers yeah. as well for things like blog. Yeah, we need to start. Yeah, I don't want to write we that have, much. We have <laughs> lots years. of people. So, and I think yeah. if we if we want to make the website so that we actually get people's motivation um, and what they really want to do, then writing this in a nice way is pretty crucial. Yeah, um, well, people are starting to write articles on their medium and that sort of stuff. And I've seen enough mm -hmm. people floating around. People are making, I mean, I saw Slava's presentation earlier on. Them kind of things are like, we need to reuse them. Uh, yeah. We need to reuse them things that people are making the effort to make good quality display information. We need to re recycle that into content that makes sense. And it's, a, I mean, like, yeah, I read so many articles just because they're really good places to, you know, five minutes to read something from getting get you know an interesting story out of it or an interesting point and you can move on you don't have to read a book so mm. there's there's something to be you know i think there's a place for medium form long form reading and and it's a way it's it's also a, it's going to build up it's it's going to let people write who are interested in the idea of writing about the things that they're doing but they're doing something meaningful and it ends up as content for us so it's just like everyone wins yeah. Um, I'm looking gonna... at the list. Um, and have you just like taken all the names out of it now and just hidden names in a different field? Yeah. Because the oh. stupid breadcrumb navigation was displaying people's names, even if you make them not visible to uh, limited users. So I've just created a new name field, which sh shows up when you open the, the user profile, the, the volunteer profile. Um, and first name and last name are just private. Cool. I'm just, I, I figured that's what you've done. I just, I was like. I'm sure there are like better ways of doing this. I, I've just, I've done the kind of brute force. You just, you just, just <laughs> ran out of solutions, so you're just doing the uh, hack. It's already pretty hacky, and hopefully at some point somebody's going to come along who has more experience with the CRM and is going to help us tidy it up. But this works for now. Is there? I mean, you've it got works. and you've got something that can basically move entire fields from one place to another in a single go, rather than exactly. So, so it's totally so it's, fixable and clean upable later. Um, and I've, I've put a call out in another community to see if I can find somebody who's worked with the system before. Maybe we can even reach out to them. I've been on their forum and they seem to be quite active. So maybe well, we can get somebody from VTI them. Yeah, yeah. VTiger's forum itself. I mean, not being funny, but um, we're, a very, we're an open source, open science community. So them being in the community, seeing how their tool is getting used yep. would be like having user research all the time. And that's kind yep. of, yeah, that's a, it's definitely a, yeah. We're, we've got a few developers that are developing tools we use, so I'm completely fine with having more people, more developers for the open source tools in the house, because, yeah, they're mm -hmm. going to be more likely to have, one, either know how to do something we don't understand, or two, fix a, fix a thing that we can't fix. Yeah. Um, oh, this, this is actually a good point, uh, fix a thing that we can't fix. There is one thing um, that we still need to fix, which is the updates tab on volunteer profiles. Is it still um, updating? <laughs> well, which just means that it just shows anything that has been done to a user's profile, and it does show it to all users, to everybody who accesses the CRM. Which means if you are updating somebody's private details, like their email address, Oh. It will pop up there, which is stupid and makes very little sense. Which is um, self-defeating. And, and I found a way to remove the tab completely, which is, you know, a good way of dealing with it. Another great hack. Um, but it requires a bit of tweaking on, on the uh, VTiger backend and, and database. Um, and Anton said yesterday that he had potentially found somebody who can take a look at it. So hopefully they can do that, but it's still something to be aware of. That at the moment we still have this, which means private details shouldn't be edited in the CRM. Okay. I mean, I'm looking at the recent updates, and um, it already the the changes that you've already changed things from are already there. 
So, I know, but it's only skills and it's only stuff that is public. I mean, I'm looking at one right now and it's a guy's name and you've, you've changed it from, you know, you've changed oh, yeah, it from name right. to... So every yeah, single one of them changed it's changed it's changed the name. So I can you're see. You're totally it. right. Of course, last <laughs> time when I found out about the privacy one, now these changes are in the recent updates. Oh God, this is so. Every, every yeah. one who you've moved, either you want to remove them all and import them all in fresh, which I don't blame you to not want to do that. Or we just, I mean, for me, I'm perfectly fine having no one using it who can't access the the whole list right now until we can solve some of these little problems because it's not that yeah. pressing a no. need because we're not currently in like we've not spun up three new teams and we need 20 new people we're not in that okay. phase so if it takes a week to fix this two weeks to fix this and and we they could still have the help needed call outs and one yeah. of the five people who've got access can still just go do the searching like i've been doing anyway so it's not it's not yeah. any worse it's this it's just you as rather than using a spreadsheet it's using a crm so it's which yeah. is probably a little, little bit better than the spreadsheet. Um, so really? I'm not worried about I'm not, I'm not worried about not having team leads being able to access it yet because I'd rather I'd rather iron out the kinks than yeah. than I mean do, yeah. And there will we're be gonna, more. We're gonna yeah. and we're gonna bump into some of the kinks by using it, looking for people when yeah. we look. So we're gonna be the test testing it out, and we just need to try and. Yeah, have somewhere to document it when we come across a weird thing, you know, even if we just, yeah, put it in the volunteer journey and have a, a notes tab of weird things the CRM did. I'm not bothered if it lives there. Yeah, yeah, and I think we have a, a big enough group of people who are interested in trying it out so we get get some feedback yeah. and get some more people to, to figure out stuff and, and find issues. So, tag. yeah, I what think does that's, that's a good idea. What does tags do? What do tags do? Public tags, create new tag. It's like you can Susie put a syntax. tag onto somebody's profile, like domain expert or something like that. All right. So is that how we would, uh, is that how we would look for the skill groups, or is that like if we were group wanting to find a group, would we, would the tags identify that, or is that a different thing? That's a different thing. So I think that's really just to put. An additional kind of marking onto your profile. I haven't looked into the text either, okay. but the skill groups are you basically, it's basically just setting up filter on the complete. Oh, list. right. Okay. So the, there's, there's a full filter. Yeah, there's going to be a full filter system on that. In separate, I mean, I can show the screen right now because I'm not, this is not the private version of it. I can, has it got any data yeah. in this yet? I mean, I can show my screen and. Don't go on the updates tab. Yeah, I'm not going to go on the updates tab. Um, yeah, that's probably got. And by the way, I'm loving that um, that work work owner you told me about. It's made yeah, my it's life. awesome, eh? It's yeah. made my life so much better. I've told I've told uh, Marta about it as well. So <laughs> yeah, this is kind of. So yeah, you've got, you know, this is the fields. So um, AI skills, science skills operations management type stuff, communication skills. So, I mean, like that person there, internet marketing, market research, there you content go. creation. <laughs> Don't <laughs> click on it. Con, con 50, 51 is, is also a little bit of AutoCAD. What else have we got in there? AutoCAD speaks English. Um, so, yeah. This the is, English one, I mean, this was another one of my uh, hacks when I was fixing the existing data. So, I mean, obviously, everyone speaks English. I mean, I'm assuming anyone who's signing up can speak English of at yeah. least a moderate level. So, because otherwise, fair play to them for getting that far, really. But it, they don't speak can you English. Just, uh, just go back a second and, and kind of show um, the filters, if you can. Cool. And then you can, you can type something oh, yeah, in yeah. the field and select it, but you can select multiple things on multiple fields and basically uh, create a subset of the list. Team planning, uh, community management, knowledge management. We need them. Can we have some knowledge managed people, please? Oh. 
And then, you know, it, it, it's like, it creates a subset of list, which you can also export, for example, and um, which we should test out because I don't know what that looks like and what kind of details are in the export. When do, you I, do, it. do I just press N? <laughs> but essentially it gives you a very quick list of, of people who are, have, have those combined skills, which if obviously aren't have... going to be any now. <laughs> and there are only, I think, 100 people in at the moment, so oh, yeah. it's not the full list. Yeah, nobody here. No, you have to quick search. Like it, it has really terrible UX, but yeah. Oh, I'm just, I press enter. <laughs> oh, well, but I'm not presenter. sure if it does. I think that's what we need is we need the data in to see if we can find, if we can use it in the way we need to use it, which I think we can. Yeah. Did you, did you make all these groups manually or did you, um, or yes. are these built off what's in there? No, I've met them manually. They are coming from the taxonomy that I did previously, but they're not exactly matching the taxonomy because I hear I, I group the, the, these fields more by what you might be searching for rather than having it a four tier taxonomy. Yeah, rather than like yeah, the zooming in style yeah, of exactly. detail. Mostly because obviously this system has not got. Yeah. That, but I set them up manually, and the beauty, beautiful thing is that if we come, if we get a new skill, it's very easy to just add it to the list. So if we get a new person saying, oh, I've got this obscure skill that we haven't had before, then uh, we'll just edit, edit the field, edit to the list, and it's in there. So we've got 11, pa 11, 11 people or 11 pages, probably 11 people. So they've all got AI in yeah. their tags, and then we've got computational biology. Let's have a look if that gives me a shorter list. So we've got one okay. person with computational biology and AI skills. And that's Con 81. <laughs> it's too tempting. It is. Um, I'm going to have to go soon, unfortunately. No. So uh, uh, I will, I'll write notes for this meeting. Um, and But it seems like, I think Bianca and I have got a lot of this upload and initial curation in hand. Uh, yeah, I mean, I can I can help with the upload side of things. I just don't want to duplicate more than all. So, I, yeah, it's a case of, I, I don't know if it, you're marking them in the list or if you... You should do a check when you upload them for duplicates. Um, I, I have set it is, up that it does check, but... Is duplicates getting rid of the ones that I missed by any chance? Like the same email addresses? Because I've gone through and found like five more. I don't um, know if... Well, at the moment, the duplicates checks for like a combination of fields, like the same name and the same email address, I think. Oh, um, right. But you can, you can tweak it. You can set yeah. it up to just check for duplicate emails. Um, it's not only the thing is it's not only duplicate email. Some people have got one email from Slack and a different email that they signed up with, and they're the yeah. ones that um, that's the. But the, my main main problems have been people who have got like a Slack name that's a simplified or slightly different name, mm. like it's just their first initial or something, and they. Yeah. And that's the kind of where I'm having to go through now, like the. If you guys have still not uploaded most of it or copied most of it over, then the things that I've changed today will ideally be fixed in the upload process. I just didn't, I didn't want to start doing it because I didn't know how far into it you were. And I didn't want to, like you say, I didn't, I didn't know how the duplication checking system worked. So I just left it alone because hmm. it's best to leave it and alone. I don't have a definite answer it. either. I just saw that when you import a CSV file, you can basically set up which duplicates it should check for. So maybe we'll just import them in batches and try that out. Um, and until it works the way that we want it. And it, okay, I, I know in the HubSpot one that I use, if I'm bringing things in that are already in, it just says, this is already in, you know? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. That's what it does. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, um, it's just um, how do we define what if a duplicate is, I think. Oh, yeah. Put it, yeah. Mm -hmm. That's I'm also kind of worried by that measurement because we're sticking the names in a field that that's not the normal name field. So I'm worried if it's not going to check the right field for the information that we're putting in because we're no, hiding No, no, no. You say you select the field. All right, cool. 
I mean, really, yeah, just I, I would say get a list of, of 20 people um, uh, because we need to copy and paste them out of the spreadsheet anyway to download as a CSV, or at least that's what I've done. I'm sure, again, there's a smarter way, but um, yeah. I mean, I we could just do the whole, we could just do the whole list in one go and see how it works. We could do, but then it could potentially be a lot of tidying up work like I had to do when I figured out the names weren't in. Yeah. So that's why I'm saying that maybe once or twice start with a small list and you'll you'll see how it works and then the list can be bigger. Well, I'll, I'll keep tidying up the list then for now. And then once I've got to the point where I feel like the list is right, then worst case scenario, you guys might not have got to some of the things that... And then the ones that are left over, we can check the, the, the we can check them together and go okay cool. that that is that and then once we've got that fine then we don't have to worry about and then once we've got the form filling in the filling the the crm automatically then that spreadsheet can be decommissioned for lack of a better word mm -hmm. yeah so i think that is the priority is to find someone who can work on the form and integrate it to the crm so Rohan yeah. is can't do we know where he's at? Um, I mean, I'm I'm waiting to hear back from him, and I'm sure he'll he'll send me a message. He uh, just has something on right now, and I've also <laughs> recruited somebody else who can, who could do that, and hopefully he'll sign up tomorrow, and um, and then we can see if he can he can take that web stuff on. Cool. And then maybe what we do is for our very first task, once everything's in the CRM, is look for some marketing nerds and see if we yes. can email them. <laughs> cool. And yeah. I'll start looking, I'll start uploading the data that is ready in the spreadsheet. That's not, you're not still tidying, Tyler. And, um, and also start looking maybe at the automation to see if we can, the email automation, to see yeah. if we can start putting in the welcome email. I mean, for me, when it comes to right now, the, the list right now is in name order because I've already checked the email matching to make sure that if there's duplicate emails, they're already matched together. And I'm, I'm down in like M or something. So I'm roughly halfway through it. Okay. And there's not, and, and, and where I, when I'm looking for it, I'm looking for an orange and a white one next to each other because an orange is a Slack account and the white one is the sign up. Okay. So if there's so, you, the only places you actually can tell if there's something that's the same is if there's one white and one orange with the same name or a similar enough name that makes you go that and that are probably the same ones. That's the way I've been doing it. So you can scan it. I mean, you can go through it quite quickly, which is why pr I'll probably have it done tonight. Because I've already okay, gone through I mean, the if you that, if you're happy to I've, do so, I've, I think otherwise this year I've gone through the damn can... thing four times now. So I'm. I'm but every, every time I say that, I've gone through it four times, but I was sat, I opened it up earlier and there was an A when I missed. I'm like, how did I miss an A? <laughs> it's, it's in so, the, it's so in the front to, of the page. <laughs> just to confirm that list should be, hopefully, everybody either from the original sign up or from Slack. The, the yeah, the, the thing list. is though, with, there is a couple of like, I can see one here that there's two people. like, I'm not two, in it. No, basically, so I'll, I'll, add you, I'll add you onto it. Um, you are into it. You are in it. I can see you right there. Why can't I, when I search on it, why can't it? Is, am I looking at the right uh, tab, the team master yes. list? Team, this, yeah, team master list. Um, if you sort it by participants, it goes in alphabetical order. Okay, cool. The filler at the top, so, sort A. Okay, so the ones we're adding in, and um, Bianca, had you started adding the ones that have unique keys? No, I mean, it was a kind of a, a random set because there were some filters set up in the Google spreadsheet and I just kind of copied that whatever was visible uh, to I mean, me at the are time. You, are you pulling from the an anonymized list or the, the raw list? Because the anonymized list has one got has got more like skill tree stuff built into it and this one... No, I mean, I'm pulling from the team master. Cool, yeah. I mean, part of it is as well right now, so I can read... So I can read Slack and the name. I've got rid of all the skills in the middle, <laughs> which is probably what you can. Oh no, no! I mean, I opened it and, and copied those. Yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah. but to answer your question, Shirley, um, it was like a kind of stupid subset of it that would be very difficult to. Well, unless Find you again. put the filters back on, and then you kind of nah. 
But we'll just use the duplicate, find duplicate function. Yeah, um, if it'll find if it finds the same yeah. thing twice, then we will then we'll go, yeah, just ignore them duplicates. Okay, so just to um, confirm what we're doing, I'm gonna sort the list by participant name and then start going from the top to the bottom. Yep. Yeah, I'm like I'm down in S's now, so once I'm done with that, it'll just you can do it in alphabetical order for me. I mean it's yeah, and, maybe, yeah. and when you import the file, make sure you check for duplicates because some yeah. of those I might have already, already imported last time. Yeah. Cool. And the ones that I'm importing are the ones that have B and C columns in orange. Yeah, B and C. Well, anything. Not uh, basically the uh, orange anything. ones are from. Yeah, the orange ones are, are Slack accounts, so they cool. will have Slack usernames. Yeah. The white ones are either never joined Slack, or I have already merged the Slack one with the sign up one. Okay. So if it's if it's Y, it means it was a sign up and it'll have a key number next to it. But ideally, a good chunk of them have got Slack usernames attached to them already. And the ones that cool. don't, either have never joined Slack or have joined Slack under a name that I can't match them together with clearly or obviously. And so, so if the there's no email. Slack, is there an automatic, because I saw the ones with no Slack go to like uh, the landing page, Slack landing page, if you click from the CRM. Oh yeah, because I put a default um, okay, into cool. the field that is, is that link that you just need to put the Slack number behind. Um, the, you can see in the spreadsheet, in the team database spreadsheet, on the very right, um, there's a tab that I call for CRM import. And there you can see the, the format because I had, I had changed it, I deleted some columns and cool. Um, yeah, because some columns are not needed for import, like the unique the key, for example. Exactly, and the Slack ID, I put the full URL um uh so yeah just this this format should work for import because it matches the field in awesome here. okay i'll do that uh in the next few days i'll do the hopefully the whole list yeah and then i'll um, i'll be i'll be able to help i have to uh I don't have as much time in the next couple of days but i have a little bit and if if you start doing this and it doesn't make any sense because you know <laughs> it's a lot in my head, then uh, we can also do another call tomorrow and do it, run through it together. That's easy. Okay. Okay, cool. Sounds okay, good. Okay, cool. Done. Yeah. Hey, you guys, I'm not technical, but if you run into tasks, little or big, that are not technical, that I can just do the work, tell me. Um, awesome. awesome. Maybe you can help also with curating the profiles. Yeah. Next so we'll let you know into the drop Yeah, as, exactly. Like if, if we can get you an account on the CRM, you can start um, the you can start making sure the skills are tagged on the on the people correctly from the spreadsheet. So you can go, okay, that name, what you know, what skills, this skill, this skill, this skill, that language, move on. Okay. That's not technical. It's literally just looking okay. for looking in writing in filling. It's filling in something that we're going to have to do, and we're going to have to work out how to do better in the future. But right now, yeah. it's a it's a manual problem. It's a data entry problem. Okay, so, so it's a you'll somebody one of you will just point me to the worksheet and get me on the CRM when the time is right. Um, have yeah. you got right? So Frankie's. What have I got on this list? I've got Shirley on it. Fringies, can you send me your email address and I'll add you on here. Yeah. Bianca's got it already. I've took some people off of this list as well, by the way. People who have not been around for a while and are obviously not, they can turn back up and they can help, but it felt like they didn't need to be on that list anymore because they were not actively doing anything with it, especially because it's not far off being decommissioned. So basically it's Daniel... I won't mind Arta's not even on it. That's how badly for limited it is. Anton, which is a different Anton. Me, Daniel, Max, uh, Shirley, Bianca, and then I'll add you, Frankies. Okay. And uh, yeah, I can I can add you onto the, the CRM so you have an account there and can start looking around. And then um, maybe once Shirley and I have a little bit more details in there, we can quickly show you how we're doing the curation. Okay. Yeah. I think wait for us to do a little bit more in there. Otherwise, we might come up against problems and you're already yeah. creating or duplicate work. Okay. So once you've got stuff in there, I'll reach out to you. Me or Bianca will right. reach out to you. Yeah. 
and we'll show you how we do the creation, the curation. Sounds good. Cool. Right. Okay. Uh, yeah, so I have to. Yeah, I have to run as well. Surely you have to run as well. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I'm probably gonna. I'm probably late for a meeting already, but it's fine. Um, <laughs> cool. We'll see if that. Thanks. We'll see if that one. Okay. Cheers, guys. Bye. Cheers. Cool. Thank, Thank you so you. much. Bye. Bye.